So thank you for invitation for this event. And I'm really sorry I couldn't be there with you in person. Uh, my name is Iga Szczęśniak and I'm an Earth Observation Project Developer at the Atlantic International Research Center. Uh, we're based in the Azores, so in some cases it's hard to travel. Um, so today I will share with you how we are using MAKI and data visualization in general at the organization. And uh, my personal project, uh, which is about visualizing data from the low cost IoT sensors, uh, which are installed on a small uh, fishing vessels. So let's start. Uh, first, I will give a small introduction to the Air Center and the Air Observation Laboratory. Um, and I will explain our interest in Maki, Julia language, and some examples of our applications. Um, then I will go to the uh, missing features of Maki that we would really like to see. And finally, how am I using Maki for data visualization and in my daily work? Um, I will show my visualization of the IoT data. Uh, okay, so um, the Atlantic International Research Center is a networking organization that works mainly on the topics related to space, climate, ocean, and energy in the Atlantic region. Uh, it has a unit called uh, Air Observation Laboratory, which is a laboratory of the European Space Agency to, to test uh, new solutions, new innovative solutions um, of uh, air observation in the Atlantic region. Our another goal is to uh, is capacity building and organizing events, workshops, trainings, and this is why we came into the idea to organize Julia EO, Global Workshop on Air Observation with Julia. And this is how I met some of you already on the event. Um, our all activities are aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we work mainly on um, thematic areas like clean and productive base, natural hazard monitoring, sustainable food production, or coastal and environmental monitoring. And uh, um, our primary, primary goal is to develop workflows and early prototypes of services that use geospatial data like satellite, IoT, weather data, and so on. So we work a lot with, uh, with uh, raster-like data, which are extremely computationally demanding. And uh, this is why we are interested into using Julia because of the better performance and the uh, high speed. Um, and our, in, in the organization, we also work a lot on the reporting, project deliverables. So plots are very welcome. And uh, it is always nice to, to show uh, stakeholders what we are doing through the data visualization or uh, through some nice figures. So this is why we want to use Maki. Mm. And so this is the example of our, one of our ongoing projects. It's called the Custodian. Um, the project is about detecting uh, small size fishing vessels uh, and the uh, fishing gear in the sea. Uh, it's based on uh, LoRaWAN technology. Uh, basically, the idea is to install the low cost uh, IoT sensors on the on the vessels and the fishing gear, and. Uh, uh, we are already testing uh, a few fishermen in the region uh, are equipped with this system already. So uh, we have the data from this and uh, we are about to create something from it. Okay. Uh, and this is the existing web application for the custodian. It was created by one of our stakeholders in a JavaScript. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we at Air Center would like to 
switch to Julia, we do more things in Julia. So when the, right now when we are visualizing data on our own, we will we are trying to do this in in Julia, and then Maki is the first package that we are going to use. So yeah, there is a lot of room for this. Um, that's a missing feature that we would like to see uh, the text on path um, and also uh, creating a connection between two topological points uh, as far as we know there is no features like this but correct me if i'm wrong okay and uh, finally how am i using maki uh, I wanted to allow users and uh, stakeholders, fishermen and, and uh, so on to manipulate the data that are gathered by these sensors and to play different parameters such as the uh, timestamp, uh, signal strength, sensor ID and so on. So my idea was to create a two point slider to filter the timestamp and a bunch of other sliders to manipulate other para parameters like signal strength or sensor ID and so on. So my idea was to use WGL Maki for it um, and to display the results on the website so everyone can get access for it. And of course, um, my idea is to use Maki for, for the reports, for project deliverables and some data visualizations to show a stakeholder or something. So this is always a needed tool. Um, this is how a typical data from the LoRa band sensors look like. So this is a tabular data at the end, and I'm using also the data frames and a bunch of other packages for the statistics. And this is a distribution of the signal to noise ratio and the received signal strength indicator, inversely proportional. So we could identify if there is something going on with, with um, some sensors. We could directly check out with with the sensor uh, if we identify it, it's not working properly. Uh, this work was actually done for later. It's the average density of the signal to noise noise ratio on the left and the received signal strength indicator on the right. Um, I created uh, thresholds for uh, for later to add for this slider um, and uh, allow people to manipulate different signal properties. So yeah, and this is a simple scatter plot of the locations, one of the sensors. It, it needs some improvement. Definitely, I need to add the background map. Uh, I was trying with Tyler and didn't work very well for me. I don't know, maybe because it's um, WGL, uh, but yeah, need to take more time. Uh, so yeah, my idea is to visualize also their locations on the map. And this is one of uh, the visualizations that I made for the project uh, to demonstrate how many countries uh, have the access to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but the fun fact uh, it's 133 countries that can benefit from the Atlantic Ocean. And the last but not least is the star processing.jl. It's a new software package that we develop. It's for the processing synthetic aperture radar data uh, written in Julia. Uh, so my uh, I have a feeling that Mac you will be needed. Uh, in the future for this. Uh, the package is not uh, even registered yet or anything, but I think there is uh, room for Maki in the future for this package. And that was it. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Comments? Hi, uh, thank you very much for 
for your talk. I, I'm wondering, um, you at some point are working also with LiDAR data, right? Or just sensors, I don't know, or satellite sensors. Uh, these are the IoT sensors, uh, the based on the LoRaWAN technology. Okay, and uh, do you know if there is some progress or is someone using LiDAR data for this? Are you using Julia your packages? I mean, one, one of them, because maybe I, I'm, I didn't understand correctly, but when you were doing all the analysis with the basins and all these, um, the last package that you were showing the server. Oh yeah, the server processing. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is a new uh, package that we developed. Uh, it's for the processing of star data, the synthetic aperture radar. So it's from the radar satellites such as Sentinel-1 or ISI and so on. It's a new project because I, as far as I know, there's no package to load, process and so on, uh, this kind of data. So we started and uh, it's already possible to load a single look complex or and grand range detected images uh, and simple object detection interferometry, but uh, it's not um, a very advanced yet. Uh, and you are not aware if someone is using LiDAR data, Julia? Data yeah. LiDAR data, um, well, I didn't work a very, uh, I didn't work a lot with the LiDAR, so uh, I don't know if there are packages for uh, this. Yeah, I'm just wondering because one of the biggest constraints for LiDAR data analysis is like the, the big data, right? And then this pretty uh, cloud computing. So I was just curious if you were aware of someone that has been already exploring this data set. Okay. Well, actually, uh, at our uh, workshop uh, that we organized in January, there was a session about um, LiDAR and processing LiDAR data in Julia. If you go to uh, the repo, uh, there is some code. Uh, All right. Yeah, I think it's what it was uh, with uh, about, about using space LiDAR and the ISAT mission, processing some data from ISAT. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is this is all this all is not very advanced work because I just started learning Julia and programming since a few months. So it's all very early stage, but I'm getting there. Good to hear. Thank you so much for your talk. And yeah, thanks again.